Hi, welcome to Inkscape for Teachers. I'm Jeff Phillips and in this tutorial we'll be looking at how to draw a pie graph in Inkscape, much like the one you can see on screen. I'll begin by selecting a blank canvas. If your view is like this, I recommend you zoom to 1 to 1 by pressing 1 on the keyboard and scroll up a bit if you want to be near the top and uh, your page view should look like that. First step is to draw a circle using the circles and ellipses tool. I'll click there and control shift somewhere about here and there we go. That colour looks as if I might have opacity turned down. I'll just check by selecting the colours, fills and strokes menu and I can see yep, the luminosity is down on that so if I drag that oh no, that should be in about the middle uh, so the opacity down here, if I drag that up, there we go to red. But look, I'll leave that somewhere in the middle for now so that I can see layers underneath as I go. I'm going to go Control D to duplicate that. What that does is it produces a, an exact copy right on top of the object we duplicated. So now I've got two copies of circles now. Control D, I'll have three. Control D, I'll have four. And I might leave it at that for the sake of this tutorial. Now I'm going to check my snapping tools. This icon on here turns on or off the snapping tools. And I'll check that I've got snapping to centres of objects there. And that should be enough, I think. Um, perhaps snap to paths as well. We can try and put other snapping icons on if uh, we're not getting the behaviour we want. Now for that top circle, I'm going to select the nodes tool. And I'm going to drag, yep, that way. If I go outside the circle, you can see that I can change the sector. I'll just stop for a minute, click the Select tool and drag off just so you can see what I mean there. Control Z to put that back. So let's say, I'll go back to the Nodes tool. I want to further adjust that. You move outside the circle. If you go inside, you do a, I think it's called a segment. If we go outside the circle, something like that, then I click the Select tool and say Select Blue. It's looking purple because it's got blue on top of purple. There's one sector. If I click on the next one down, then the Nodes tool, and perhaps this one here outside the circle, and drag it back to there. If I click the Select tool, it's actually quite a big segment or sector but some of it's hidden by the other one but uh, once we make opacity 100% it won't matter we won't get the colour combinations let's make that uh, green again it's not the bright green we expected perhaps because it's we're looking through 50% opacity green and 50% opacity red okay now if we click on the large part again and then the nodes tool, I can drag, go outside the circle. And I wonder if it lets me click yellow there. Yeah, it does. And select tool. Then the final, it's actually a full circle there. But if I click the nodes tool, I look, I can leave it and do nothing, or I can can do that, but um, I don't know why I'd want to do that unless I had other sections, so I'll control Z back to that and leave that at red. Now I'm going to select all by dragging a marquee around the lot and drag the opacity up to 100%. And there you can see I've got the sectors of a, a pie graph. If I again select everything and we shift click on the black to produce a border, it's a fairly thin border, I'll go to stroke style, control shift F and stroke style tab, and just the up arrow until I get a border that looks how I like. And quite a thick border sometimes looks good. There we go. Now I need to label the pie chart. I can do that with the text tool. Click anywhere. It might be a survey of students' favourite colours, just a simple example. I'll just use the colours names themselves as the labels. Control shift to drag that down to something more appropriate. 
Control C rather than Control Duplicate or Control D to duplicate and the paste always goes where the cursor position is so if I now go Control V you see it goes smack bang in the middle of the cursor move to here, I don't have to click, just Control V again Control V and I've got my four sections now on the text tool if I click the text tool I can edit change that to yellow perhaps change this one to green or whatever label you want this one to blue and that completes the labels I might just drag these off a bit so that I can show you how to put arrows pointing to them <coughs> excuse me text tool again and let's type some percentages now normally you'd calculate these roughly I guess and um, you can measure these angles using the ruler tool over here somewhere yep there it is but for the moment I'll just type oh, let's say 30% and I'll shrink that down control shift maybe put that up there notice that snapping I mightn't want that I'll turn all the snapping off then I can drag closer without snapping again control C and then move the cursor position control V control V control V I'm just estimating these percentages but as I said you might have calculated these more accurately that looks like about uh, 60 degrees, 1 6 maybe 17, well I'll say 15 percent doesn't really matter this looks like a bit over a quarter I might say 27% and that's forced me to do some arithmetic hasn't it 30, 45, 52, 72 so that leaves 28% here text tool, got it roughly right I guess 28 and I can drag these percentages close to the labels if I wish I can align these perfectly using the align and distribute tool I'm just going to eyeball it for now now for arrows, the Bezier tool if I click click I can go either into the yellow or at the circumference I'll choose to go in click and enter click click enter click click enter click click enter okay don't know whether that looks the greatest if you want to I might change my mind and well first of all I'll thicken up these lines, shift click to select them all then stroke style continually clicking there we go, now I'm going to click the node tool I'm just going to move these nodes I can probably get them to snap on the scumps if I turn the snapping tools back on and there we go you'll see a little confirmation message cusp node oops, the other one to path cusp node is the one on the end of the line, the path is the scumps of the circle OK, so that uh, just about completes it. I can put arrowheads on those if I like. But for now I'll just leave that and just put a final heading. I might just pinch that from Control c Control v I'll move that. I know it's off the page, but uh, I'll fix that up in a minute. If you want to play around with stretching in different dimensions, you can. I'll select all of that uh, sometimes it can shoot down, I'm going a bit slowly here Control G to group that means I can move it all down without messing anything up another way of editing the text is to double click, sometimes that doesn't work and you have to click away then click back in and it works Graph title and now if I I'll control mouse wheel just to zoom in a bit you can see I've completed my chart a little fancy effect that you might not bother with normally is to put a bit of a shadow behind it I'll click on the red, remember I selected the whole thing, if I control click on a section that selects an object within a group now that's not just this sector here, remember that was part of a, a red circle that's been covered up by other sectors I'm going to control D to duplicate that you can see it's put a duplicate on top and it is all red I'll make that 
and I'll try black, see how that looks. I'll send it to the, well maybe I won't send it to the back yet, I'll put a bit of a blur on that. Maybe like that. And I'll send it to the back using this icon here. And you can see I've got a bit of a, a shadow effect that uh, can make the graph pop out a little bit more, looks a bit fancy. That completes this tutorial. Once again, thanks for watching. If you have time, check out my website, MathsPro. That's maths-pro.com. Bye for now.